Hey everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight. Got a nice running of the live CD, actually live USB of Annex 17.2. Now I'm running this live with persistence. Um, mostly I set up the persistence so I could have simple screen recorder installed so we could run the video. This is real hardware, not VirtualBox. I'm going to show you a few things. I've done installations, I've done other videos for setting up Annex 17. I thought, I, and I've shown videos of setting up the live system for Annex 17. I thought this to go around we would cover customizing the desktop or for other instance. So this is the default Rocks IS, ISWM desktop. So ISWM is, is the default file manager so if you don't change any default settings or if you just boot up without any settings changes whatsoever which is the same as not changing the defaults uh, you will get this this desktop you got a nice wallpaper you got some icons on the desktop here uh, you got a little conky display you run over here this conky display will display your network connection information if you're connected to the internet notice I am not connecting there at this time because one of the things we're going to do is set up your wireless for this laptop so first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the wallpaper now a great many of the things that you can do with Antix is available from the Antix Control Center now most things are also available in the menus if you can find them in here there's a lot of different apps to do a lot of different things here's the wallpaper app under preferences relatively reasonably laid out okay I however prefer the Control Center so I'll go to Control Center desktop choose wallpaper and here's the the wallpaper here. And if you hit select picture, you'll see the ones that come canned with with antics. And you see there is a preview image preview window. But you're not limited to the ones in this folder. I actually have some set up in my folder here. So I'm going to set up one of my uh, uh, Dalek uh, wallpapers. Let's go with this one. Hit apply and there's my Dalek. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Uh, you get a nice little, uh, you can do what you want with the wallpaper. That wallpaper app is the same no matter what desktop environment you choose. Whether you choose IceWM Rocks, which is the default, you can choose SpaceWM, or I'm sorry, um, Fluxbox Space, or JWM. The wallpaper setting tool is the same. It's, it's written, it's set up for antics so they can manipulate all the desktops. Let's say you want to change your theme. Well, there's multiple ways to change your theme. Now, a lot of other desktop environments like Mate or some of the others, they'll kind of sort of combine all this, what I'm about to cover. So you got two different layers of themes. You've got the outside borders and buttons, which are controlled by the window manager theme. Now, see, so you also have the toolbars and things like that. That is controllable down here from the menu themes. And you see you get all kinds of different ones here um, available. Uh, let's see. Let's just pick one here. I don't know. I'm going to take uh, iSkill Remix Medium. It's a little bit darker. So we'll leave that for now. So that change, you notice the, the buttons and the menus and the window borders all change. That is, that's what controls that stuff. But you notice the interior of Mike Annex Control Center window did not change. That's because that is controlled by what's called your GTK theme. Okay, This is the same kind of themes that you get in XFCE or, or Mate, the same kind of things. Mate these days is GTK 3, but you, you get the idea. It's, it's, it's those same kinds of themes. Okay, so we're going to change the theme here. Now I'm going to pick Arc Dark. And I've already got the font where it's good, close. And that doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to keep that for now. For now um, going through. Now you notice the you got a little graphics uh, corruption down here. When you restart ISWM, that'll, that'll go away. That happens when you change the GTK themes. I'm not going to do it while I'm recording because it tends to make Simple Screen Recorder go a little haywire. So we'll just leave that be. Um, so that's setting the theme, that's choosing the wallpaper. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what other things might you need to do out of the box when you first set up? Well, let's get that Wi-Fi connection working. So I'm going to go into network and I'm going to, you got a couple options here. Okay, now the first option is Cine, this guy right here. This is the default on Dantix. It's a console 
um, tool uh, for setting your network connection. It's actually the fastest way at, from boot to a network connection. It's much faster than going through one of the daemonized versions. Okay, it's much faster than Wicked. It's much fa it's way faster than Network Manager. Okay, so this sets up at a pretty pretty basic level. And what you do is you pick your connection. You can see my my uh, 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 go, buttons going up and down. I don't want to do that one, so I'm going to click. You can click in the mouse when you're inside the terminal window. Okay, so you can click the options. I'm going to click WLAN. Now I'll say scan or roam. So I want to scan for a network to connect right now. That's what I want. I want to scan for a network. You can do this other thing to do something fancy with WPA supplicant. You, nobody does this. Okay, just, just click scan. It's going to scan for the networks in range. There should be several on my home network. Oh, look there, TARDIS 5G. I wonder whose that is with my Dalek. So we'll click TARDIS 5G. I'm going to type in my password and accept the password. I'm not going to change any defaults here. The system's actually set a lot fine to suit LL hot plug. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, if, if you click auto, I think it'll also work, but you, can leave, you don't have to do anything here. You can say skip. Except you can see it sets up W supplicant for you already. It's doing my DHP discover, DHCP discover, and it's done. And you can see over here in the corner, I have my LAN monitors have popped up. Do you want to exit? Yes. Done. Okay, fine. Now what you're gonna find, there is no network monitor. Actually, there's no network manager running. Okay, what this has done, it has set up the hardcore down low level. Uh, interface file for network interfaces so you don't need a network manager and if you're on one network you're done I wouldn't bother with doing anything else uh, but let's say you want to roam networks okay you can use YCD or Wicked I'm gonna call it Wicked it's easier to say so you can you can do the same thing with Wicked now Wicked if you run from the live system by default it's gonna say it needs a password to access your network cards and there's a reason for that the reason for that is, is that the the man when the the network manager is not running by default in Annex, the daemon is not running. It's not set up whatsoever at all, unless unless when you started from the live CD, you selected from one of the F menus, and I'm gonna put a graphic here so you can see it. The F menu. You see the YCD option on it, the Wicked option. You click that on your first boot before you ever do anything else, and now Wicked's going to be the default file, uh, network manager rather than um, Cine. And you'll actually get the icon down here in the corner. You see it's, it's actually here right now because I've got it running. But you saw that on my system it didn't find anything. I'm going to shut down. I'm going to select that option. I'm going to be right back, and you're going to see the difference. Okay, so I'm back, and you'll see I got the wicked network monitor down here, Bob. Now it says I'm not connected. There's an interesting uh, uh, problem here is that I've actually already set the connection up with Cini, so there's a little bit of a hiccup. Um, wicked will take over running it, uh, but we've got to tell Wicked what interface I'm using. So I'm going to click on uh, open this up, go to this little arrow here, preferences, and we'll tell it which wireless interface I'm using. Yeah, I think if you set this up originally, it, it will it will fill in the blanks, but uh, automatically. But uh, since I already had it set up, it's not going to. So WLAN zero is my interface. So WLAN zero, and click OK. And there we go. It knows I'm connected. It's now going to show me networks if I hit the refresh button. It shows me all the details because it what Wicked uh, inter interfaces quite nicely with the default CD setup once it knows what interface to check. So it's it, it's all good. And you see we, we're already connected. It is showing us connected. So that's all fine and well. If you want to be able to automatically connect, you can do that. You can click this box. The first time you set up your network, you're done. That'll 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 stick now. Now let's say you didn't do the boot command. Let's say you're already booted. Maybe you're already installed. There's no boot command option when you're already installed. What do you do? How do you get YCT to actually run? I'm going to show you the trick because Remember, Annex tries to be lean and mean, so you don't need the YCD daemon, so it's not enabled by default. Where do you go to enable it by default? You go into your file manager, Etsy, defaults. 
let's see, da 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 da, da default, and there's a white wicked uh, menu. You can right click on that, hit edit as root. Password for the live system is, if you're on persistence, is whatever you set it, but the defaults are demo for user and root for the root user. I believe Antix uses root everywhere. Nope. There we go. And you can see this start daemon line is what you're looking for. By default, that's going to say no, but when you use the code, it just changes it to yes. That's all it does. Okay, so if you've installed and you want to set this up, just edit this file, change it to no. When you reboot, Wicked will come up, no problem. Okay, it is not hard. You just got to know where to look, and that's where you look. So you heard it here first. So that's setting up your network connection. We've changed our wallpaper, we've changed our themes. Um, what other things would you like to do? Well, you might want to install some apps. And there's a variety of tools and antics for that. You can use Synaptic Package Manager. Here's Synaptic coming up. That's your classic Debian apt package management system GUI. It is fantastic. And you can do all your major system task, uh, installation tasks from here. It gets a little unwieldy sometimes looking for a particular package. Actually, looking for a particular package is easy, but browsing it gets a little tricky. Uh, but you, we also have Package Installer, which is a, this might look familiar to you, it is, basically it's the popular applications tab from MX uh, Package Installer that's available on the MX system. It's a different version, it's it's kind of forked off, It's um, but it's, it's more or less the same. Uh, and it has the different options you've come to know and love, Chromium, Chrome, Firefox, Pale Moon, uh, you know all those things messaging we got some antic specific stuff one-to-one -one voice uh, personally I'm a big fan of remote access with SSH conduit uh, which check out my video on that it's a great tool for uh, doing uh, remote access over encrypted connections you even kind of do a poor man's VPN if you want to it's 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 pretty good stuff so all your all your there's all kinds of popular applications in here simple screen recorders here there's some new themes you can install uh, utilities. Actually, we have some utilities from the from the MX world. This is really nice. Um, Repo Manager is already here. The iDevice Mounter is available. Uh, that helps you mount your iPhones. Ooh. And App Notifier is the tool for that automatically checks for updates to the app system. Not strictly speaking necessary, but a nicety to have. So, there you go. And of course, all the other stuff that you come to expect. Caden Live. There's there's a desktop environment tab up here now with cinnamon even in it so you know give it a try have a play it'll it, it's fun all sorts of neat stuff in here and for you guys that still want to use flash flash is here and if you want to remove it you can remove it from right here and it'll be gone from everything except you know google chrome because google chrome comes with flash uh but if you're using but if you care about removing flash maybe you're not using chrome i don't judge i don't care what you use um so all that's here, graphics applications. So anyway, you might want to install some of that stuff, and you can check as many things as you want and click the install button, and it'll just pfft, it'll spit them all down, and you're, it'll be in business. They'll show up in your system menu. <sighs> what other kinds of customizations can we do? What about creating new links on your desktop? What do you want to make? Uh, this is not uh, particularly difficult. Let's say you want to make a new... Um, uh, link to an application like we have the help here that fires open the antics uh, FAQ file which is very handy very cool and you should check it out uh, if you got any help this is of course the link for the file manager well let's say I want to link to my videos page well I'm just gonna drag that right out of the file manager put it on there with rocks it did not it does not copy the default antics setup uses what's called the rocks pin board that's what the desktop is this is not a desktop folder this is a hard concept for a lot of people to grab around, especially coming from the Windows world. And let's be fair, most of the other desktop environments in the, Antix, in the uh, Linux world treat the desktop as a folder. This system does not. And actually, it's a, when you think about it, it's kind of a little more flexible than teaching the, t treating the desktop like a folder. This is basically just a place to put links. So this is a link to my video folder that's in my home folder. And if you look, if I click on that, you'll see that it's home videos. So it, this, it, so literally all you need to do to put links on your desktop is drag them over and it doesn't matter where they come from. You want to do an application? No problem. Most application desktop files are in user share applications. 
and let's just drag DOSBox over there. There you go. There's DOSBox. It gives it a name. You get the the icons all set up. You can actually edit the item by right clicking on them and changing things like the text displayed as the name because you're not you're not editing the original file. You're editing the link. So this is all completely safe to do. Um, there are other ways and antics to do this. You can go up to, uh, let's see, preferences. I think there was an add, ah, da, 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 add menu item, yes. Well, I thought there was an add desktop item, but maybe I'm thinking of an older iteration. Let's try add menu item, just to see. Item name, item category, item location. Oh, you can put it on the desktop. So you can fill out this thing, but when you're using rocks, I find it easier just to drag the thing right onto the desktop and do it that way. And you can see it does work just fine. The other major item is the personal menu. On the menu, there's a video done by yours truly. Uh, I've done the personal video a couple times now, so I'll throw up a couple links to uh, personal videos so, so you can see how to add things to the personal menu. Uh, you can do it through the, I believe it's under maintenance, edit menus. Yes, you can add, add you can manage the applications menu or you can change things for the personal menu. You can choose which one you want to do there. It's a very handy way of adding uh, links. I often will set up my five or six. Think of this as your favorites, okay? And it can be anything. Anything you can put in a desktop file, it can be there. One of the other cool things you can do, and I can't really show it on the video, but under uh, session, I believe it is, yes, you can change your slim background. What's the slim background? That's your login screen where you type your log username and password. You can change that background. This is a nice handy place to do that real quick. And I believe, yeah, you just you just navigate to whatever. Yeah, it doesn't show you a preview. That's the only downside to it. You gotta know what image you want, but you probably do already. Um, I often will set all my images to the same my grub image, my, that's the boot menu. I'll set the boot menu and a few other things to the same to the same image. Uh, I believe you can do the same thing with the grub image, but this is not going to change it on the live system. This is only going to change it on the installed system if you happen to install it to a hard drive. Just so you know. Uh, a little more, a little trickier to, to change the themes on the live system. <clears throat> um, so there you go. That is uh, customizing the default Rocks Ice WM desktop. Now, I'm going to be doing a couple more videos because there's a couple of things. One thing I will mention, just because people always ask, is yes, you hit the menu button on your keyboard and the menu does open. However, there is no text searching. It just hits the whatever letter. Um, oh, that's interesting. Um, it just hits whatever uh, the first letter is when you type is, is all it does. So, but the applications are here. There is a ton of them on the full. That's what I'm running right now. The, anyway, that is, uh, I just wanted to cover customizing. You guys can download it and try it out. These things are free after all, so go to town. Uh, check out the tools, you got any questions, put a post over at the Annex forums, and uh, you know, have some fun. Next video coming up, I'm going to be customizing this live USB because this is going to be my main live USB uh, for my own use. I'm going to customize it the way I normally do uh, with the Fluxbox uh, environment. So for tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to AnnexLinux.com or throw up a post at AnnexForum.com. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.